my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and yesterday I did a video and put the video up of the two strokes of shite and then there was a few other videos and I did my video on the one stroke ish engine um, you know and there's a lot of great comments and all the rest of it and one of the comments that came through literally an hour ago so I thought I'd jump straight on it is that you have your crankcase of a two stroke um, split so you imagine all this is in half and then you have your wrist pin and what have you and then you have your shaft coming out like this um, god the drawing skills today so there's your casing like so and then you have your bear in here you have your bear in here like this and then um, a lot of times you have a shoulder and then you have your oil seal and the question that I the, the comment that I just received is why can't you move the bearing the other side of the oil seal well that sounds like an awesome idea because you know if you can move your bearing the other side of the oil seal then you can have a, either a, a separate oil supply or you could basically just leave it in some oil like sealed bearings are um, you know why can't you do this is there a reason why you can't do this? Because this would solve all our problems. Because the oil seal allows oil to go through your bearings and it pushes it back into the crankcase. You know, why can't we separate the two? Well, there's a reason why we can't separate the two. There's a reason why you wouldn't want to separate the two. So we have crank throws, uh, like so. And then you'll have your crank pin, and then you'll have shaft and then you sometimes have a taper on it and a thread and what have you and on your end depending what motorcycle it's fit so let's just go with a scooter or something oh, what am i doing you'll then have your other journal like so and then if you're doing it you've had like a moped or something it has like a bloody shaft like that for your variator, your variator to go on a thread and splines and blah 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 so why do we stick our bearings here and why can't we do a switcheroo well, the reason is, is because of the loading that happens with this engine. So when you fire your piston, you are putting a lot of load, you're putting a lot of force on the top of the actual crank pin. And what this causes, this causes the whole crankshaft to flex, and it flexes out this way. So these two webs flex out like that, you know, they basically just bow out. And this happens, we're talking, uh, we're talking microns, you know, but it does happen, it flexes. And to increase the stability and the rigidity of this system, you put your bearings here, as close to each other as you possibly can. And the reason why we do that is it's a lever in action. This whole thing is, if it's going to bow out, the whole thing is going to want to tip, it's going to want to ride like this, and they both want to go into ride. So the way you restrain that is try and have your bearings as close to this force, because the bearings are basically taking the load every time the piston fires, and because we fire every time we get to top dead centre. And then obviously you put your oil seals here, because you, know, you need to seal your crankcase and all the rest of it. If you were to do a switcheroo then your pivot in action would be your, your fulcrum in a sense instead of being here it would be here and you'd get you'd have a lot more um, wear you'd have a lot more strain and stress on the actual cases and the crankshaft is more likely to actually start to bow out because you've got to remember one of the problems with engines in um, full stop, especially with crankshaft design, be it two-stroke, be unit crankshaft like this, or a four-stroke, is the fact of the matter is, is that it always happens at the same place. So it's one-sided. So if you get a bar, you know, you get a bar of steel, and you apply a force, um, just because basically you're rotating it and it's happening to all sides, but the fact of the matter is, is that with um, reciprocating engines it's not it's always at the top dead center up to about 45 degrees that's generally that area which means that the crankshaft will always be in the same location because of timing and just because that's the way it works um, but you're always going to have this loading on um, your crank pin and on your bearings in exactly the same way 
and if you space out your bearings this loading is going to be more severe it's going to be more crank deflection and things will wear out quicker and things will break but the thing is things are more likely to catastrophically break it would be an excellent idea if we could do that there is possibly some solutions to this and I will do some videos I need to do some sketches and I need to do uh, a bit of CAD work so I can fully show you how this works but I will also do some um, uh, failure analysis and uh, yield simulations and stuff so I can show you the forces and I will literally do this I'll um, measure up uh, an actual crankshaft and I'll stick the bearings in the right the correct place and then I'll stick the bearings in uh, you know outboard in a sense and we'll see the differences from the simulation that shows you that how the force is spread distributed and what could be a possible failure the other thing is as well is is it's um, thrusting so this crankshaft is going to thrust from side to side because the uh, con rod has some wiggle room, it has some play and you usually have your plain thrust bearings in there or your thrust spacers, thrust washers, whatever you want to call them but there is thrusting, the um, piston and the con rod where your wrist pin is there is some movement there so this entire crankshaft can and will because of the gearing, especially if it's got a helical primary drive it will thrust backwards and forwards and if your bearings are all the way out here that thrusting there's nothing to stop it there's just a shitty oil seal so your crankshaft will literally start to rub on the inside of your cases which again is severely bad puts stresses and strains on your crankshaft fucks your cases you know can make a real mess of things um, so the sides of the bearings even though they are not primarily thrust bearings this is why we use um, rollerball bearings this is why these bearings are balls instead of rollers now rollers can take more dynamic load um, for a smaller size however rollers do not deal with thrusting they only do they only deal they only work radially um, so rollers are great for your crank uh, for your uh, well I say the great for they're used for your wrist pin at your small end because you can't fit a better bearing in there. That's one of the major reasons is that you couldn't stick a big massive roller bearing in there. It'd make everything really heavy and so on and so forth. So the small profile is what is re required here and here. And generally there is thrusting and you can tell what happens when you don't oil it properly. It soon goes pop and bust. But because there's a lot of mass here, the difference is with your piston is your piston is quite light. So the rollers, even though there is thrusting from basically compression, um, hopefully the rollers are in different places every time that happens. Uh, same with your small end and all the rest of it. You know, we're trying to fit small bearings in here to uh, increase the longevity and what have you. Um, so basically, when your piston fires, it's pushing. You know, it's basically compressing the bearing. When we talk about thrusting in this respect, we're talking about backwards and forwards, not in uh, basically along the axis of rotation. So your uh, big end and your small end bearings, they take up and down loading, which is what they're designed to do. Whereas in ball bearings, uh, ball roller bearings are designed to take nah, radial and axial a bit, but they're obviously better at axial. But they, you know, basically this is a hardened steel, um, you know, it's a hardened steel face that's quite, it's precision ground and all the rest of it, so it can take that thrusting and what have you. And you usually end up putting a radius on the inside of your uh, web here, and that's pretty much where it rides on. But if you add an oil seal, which is basically just a thin sheet metal, um, a sheet metal pressing that's impregnated in rubber this that's not going to stop the thrust into the crankshaft backwards and forwards and you'd have horrible failures of your crank rubbing on the inside of your cases so that's why we don't switch them out and do them the other side you you know it's not that you, it's not that you physically can't it's that you would choose not to because it would be detrimental to your design one day do you know what one day I'll get a, um, some cases probably it's like a 50cc moped cases We'll mill them out and we'll literally just flip them the other way and see what happens. But uh, pretty much that's what would happen. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.